Good afternoon and welcome to Robbing Minds. I'm Oscar Onyiso and a happy Sunday to you and a happy Palm Sunday to our Christian uh, brothers and sisters. Great to have you on the show this Sunday afternoon. A lot to talk about as usual. We're going to kick off with the Red Chamber. It has become the destination point for ex-governors who run for the Senate and end up retiring there at the Senate. Is this a trend? Fifteen ex-governors are currently in the Senate and many more on the way 2019. Also taking a look at the hashtag that has brought the nation under one canopy preaching and speaking in one voice hashtag free Leah talking about the adopted girl who the whole nation is riding around to make sure that she comes back home and she's been an inspiration why because she's refused to denounce her faith she's a Christian and she's standing by it is there more to this we'll take a look at that entertainment segment we have a very familiar famous face uh, that will be joining us here better known from the ensemble of the cast at Jennifer's Diary. Who is she? Well, stick around to find out. But for now, I have the one and only lawyer extraordinaire in the house with us, Farouk Abbas. Thank Great you to have me. you, bro. Thank you for having me. How are you today? I'm doing very well. Let's Indeed. kick off very quickly. Red Chamber, the House of Red, the Senate, I don't know, everything about um, the journey of our former governors to the House of Senate becomes some kind of like retirement home. Um, what, what do you think about this, considering that a number of them didn't really perform that well in, in their states? Well, I don't, I don't see it as anything surprising because we need to look at it from different dimensions. Mm -hmm. And the first dimension is that as a former governor, are you constitutionally empowered or entitled to contest for Senate? I think the, question to, the answer to that is yes. And um, as a governor and as a legislator, um, the parameters for um, determining success is quite different. As a governor, if you want to determine whether um, a person performed as governor, there are some yastics you're going to be looking at, infrastructure development, health, education, and all of that. But as a senator, there are different parameters. Mm -hmm. So I don't subscribe to the view that the mere fact that um, a governor has failed woefully um, as a, as a two-term governor automatically disentitles him to perform as a parliamentarian. Because he might perform um, woefully as an executive, but you might, you might find that when he gets to the Senate, he might be able to, to, to perform very well. But what I, what, I, what I think we should look at is because, you know, as a parliamentarian, especially at the national level, clout is very important. If you have a, a, a newbie at the parliament, it's not going to be respected. Even in the United States of America, the senators who pull their weight are the oldies, are the senators who have won re-elections a, a number of times. So if you join the Senate as a newbie, there's a tendency that you might not be able to pull your weight and your people, might, your, your constituents might, might suffer for that. So I think that we should look at it. There's a positive side and there's a negative side. So talking about the negative side, we, we tend to have reports, um, sometimes for lucky pictures, of empty chairs and some of um, these legislators are sleeping during during sessions, um, and it seems to just go unchecked. Yes, the negative side. I mean, that's just a minor. That's a, just one of the negative side. For me, I think the major negative side is what's the what's the goal? Are they going to the Senate for an altruistic purpose, or are they just going to the Senate to cling on to power so that they can still be relevant in the system? If the goal is to um, serve the people and amend the laws and make sure we have good laws and contribute to um, debates at the Senate. I think that's very fine. So, but in, but in most cases that we've had in the Senate, I'm not sure that you can say that the purpose is altruistic. Because if the purpose is altruistic, the membership sitting, um, sitting arrangements at the plenary sessions, at the hearings, will be full, will be jam-packed. But in most cases, like you rightly said, when we watch it on TV, we see empty seats and you see people sleeping. I mean, if you're an old man, if you're a 65-year-old, 70-year-old, your alertness will not be as solid as it should be. I mean, so I don't, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm 52 and... Okay, I'm not 52. <laughs> yeah, you know, so, so I mean, I, I think there's a, there's a balance. That what we should work on now, we have 15. Mm -hmm. I don't think 15 is too bad if you have 15 former governors because that's barely 10% of one nine senators, you know. And in the Senate, you should have a blend of all. You should have the young, you should have the old, you should have um, intellectuals, you should have academics, you should have professionals, you should have Let, entrepreneurs. Let's even touch on very quickly. I mean, there's a, there's a very good blend. They're the entertainers. Some are politicians turned musicians. Uh, some, some are very vocal. 
Uh, some are very vocal online. Uh, some are non-existent. But at the end of the day, uh, uh, what keeps coming back, especially in recent times, is this issue of the allowance at 13.5. We had uh, one of the representatives actually um, stressing and emphasizing and defending why it is what it is. Because some of them are of the opinion that that money is actually meant to take care of everything that happens, from the drivers to petty cash to everything. And some of the opinion that it's still quite outrageous. For some reason, it still has not been dealt with. Why do you think that is? Well, from my own point of view, I'm not, I'm not the type, I don't follow the bandwagon. I don't just jump on sensational, sensational, sensationalization, you know. When I first saw the figures, I, I wasn't moved mm -hmm. in real terms, to be honest. I mean, about some days ago, we were reading about a particular minister whom they say has been collecting extra codes and extra codes and extra codes. The truth is, for us to assess the emoluments of um, our office holders, we need to know what everybody ends across board. I mean, I, I know, I, I, I have seen a couple of politicians, I know what their running cost is. They have um, legislative aides, they have special advisors, they have people writing their speech, they have all sorts. It's a typical Nigerian, if you know a senator, if your wife gives birth, you go and see the senator. If your son wants to go to school, you go and see the senator. If your father dies, you go and see the senator. Mm -hmm. So we put so much pressure on our, on our public office holders. So I think it would be unfair for us to just look at it from one angle without mm -hmm. looking at it. Because even Nigerians, we are at fault too. We have to blame too because these senators, most of all, when they, some of them don't even go home because they know when they go home, people come to the house with all sorts of demands. Mm -hmm. So if you know a senator earns 500,000 naira per month and all of you are going there to get those kind of demands, where do you want him to get this money from? And again, if people go for extra code, you know, we need to look across board. You can't just be criticizing senators. But well, do you think that's probably one of the reasons why it's a do or die affair to get to the Senate? Because it's still a very lucrative business. Oh, definitely. It's one of the highest paid um, in the nation. We've, we've read about this and everybody has become so conversant with the fact that these there can be more to be done with respect to conserving our finances. Our resources are just being spent, literally. Yeah, first things first, I think you need to disincentivize it because if you don't disincentivize it, you're going to have the wrong people aspiring to go to Because it's like an investment. Yeah. If I know if I have 300 million, I can just invest it on this campaign and I'll be getting 13.5 minimum per month. I think it's a worthy investment. So I think the first step we need to take is we need to disincentivize it. Once you don't disincentivize mm -hmm. it, then automatically you're going to be encouraging people looking for the money to go there because the money is quite huge. Even the senator who complained, who, who, who bailed the cats on how much they earned, you know, mm. say he declined the money. He's also collecting the money.